Ah, look, we've made it. I'm glad that we finally made it to the ancient Sky City. This place really is gorgeous. I love the scenery. <clears throat> and this is the perfect place to end things off with this fantastic set in the E-Series. Let me just say, so many of these cards are just so memorable and interesting that it makes me actually want to review every single individual card in the set. And it makes me happy to cover Pokemon cards that have real heart and soul injected into them. Today, I think that I want to start with Toshino Aoki, who worked on four cards for Sky Ridge, starting with the Aerodactyl, which looks to be screaming as it flies through a cave, with some nice deep blue-green water below it. The specks of white. The card is simplistic beauty in my opinion. The Kadabra is also quite nice. I like how, it, again, it's very simple, but it conveys a curiosity in the Pokemon that I don't feel like we usually see from it. And the rocks changing color with the distance is also quite nice. The sun current is very simple, but the water effects as it falls from the top is really top notch. It almost looks like the sun current is in the same area as the sun flora is, which is a nice touch. Finally for Aoki is the swine up, which just seems to be crawling away as it goes down a path with some nice mountains and clouds in it with a bright blue sky in the background. Overall, Aoki proves himself to produce some really nice simplistic cards for the TCG, some that we don't typically see where they're purposeful and intentional with that simple design decision, which I respect. Our next artist is Sumiyoshi Kizuki, one who I'm always delighted to review due to the conflicting and unique style that they have, starting with the Electrode, which seems to be trying to electrocute everything that stands around it, as it conjures up a storm that strikes many lightning bolts onto the ground, with some nice gothic-looking sharp buildings in the background, and rain droplets splattering around the card. The Dally Bird just appears to be chillin' as it sits on top of a house, as a rainbow forms in the background, and more houses and mountains can be seen in the back. The Eevee seems to be in the same cave as the previous Ditto was in, and we can see a very similar cave painting featuring in this card, which is cool, as these are depicted by two totally different artists, so it's nice to see that a lot of these cards connect with each other. The Mantine swims along the cave as... The water is very clear, and bubbles float up to the surface, which is very striking, with the non-visible outlines of the card. Continuing on with cards that connect, the Shuckle appears to be in the same Oasis City that a few of our other cards found themselves in, as it appears to be in a very similar crater city surrounded by water, and it scratches its head with one of its tentacle arm thingies. The Voltorb looks straight angry, dude. Like, the way that he looks up and to the right is just so devious. I like how you can see out of the house and even small bits in the background too. I think it's just neat. The Weedle appears to be in the same city as the previously mentioned Deli Bird, which is just a very neat touch. Pretty sure I've said this before, when different cards connect into one, it's just such a nice idea that I'd love to see in different cards, and these are no different, as you can clearly tell that Kizuki is just a talented artist who has two distinct styles that they use. It's just so neat to see. Our next artist is the one who is in charge of the Pikachu evolution line, being Yukamori with the Raichu, which looks up into the right. I like the little white outline on this card, and the dark background contrasts nicely with the yellow Raichu. The Dunsparce seems to be crawling along a cliffside, with many deep rocks around it. The Pikachu just holds its arms to the side as it smiles and stands up around some boulders, and foliage is all around it, which is cute, and there are some neat little white dots that surround it. The Pillow Swine stands next to some destroyed concrete ruins and bricks as the rubble can be seen around it, and I can only assume that Pillow Swine was the one who caused the damage. Then finally for Mori, the Swineup, which just smiles as it looks forwards, with some nice blurry trees in the background and little rocks below it. Suffice to say, Mori has been proven to be a staple of the TCG since they started back in Neo Discovery, and it's nice to see them get a nice spread of Pokemon for the penultimate set of the Watsi era. Our next artist is one who you probably expect to be much later on the list, with their super wide array of beautiful cards that they've worked on so far, but no, they just keep on going in Sky Ridge. This being Naoyo Kimura, who worked on six cards for the set, being the Machamp, which thrusts its arm forwards and extends one of its hands outwards while looking very upset. The Polyrath, which sits down and looks up, as the moon appears to be split halfway diagonally. And it looks like the shadow of Charizard is in the distance, but I also like the fog around the Pokemon. The Vaporeon bounds out of the water, and it splashes it everywhere around it, which is just gorgeous. I like the colors, because even though Vaporeon is already blue, the water and the sky are very distinct, and you can see all the different colors that they used. The Sandshrew look up as the sun sets above them. You can tell that it's a setting as you can see the shadows slowly creeping down the crater. But it's a cool rendition of Sandshrew. I just like how one of them comes up from a little burrow. It gives it some nice personality. 
The slug goops down from some rocks as it illuminates the area. I like the depth in the cave with the illuminated light. Then finally for Kimura, the Snorlax, which lays in a little bath with some steam rising around it, and some nice mountains in the background. I like the colors in this card quite a bit. For Kimura, it doesn't surprise me that they made a lot of really cool cards for the set, and I'm excited to see more from them. Our next artist is one who I always enjoy talking about, being Yukiko Baba. These cards all show off that signature Baba style, which is something that I'm determining a name still for, but we'll start off with the Kabuto, which grasps onto a rock as it sits in a cave with some nice teal water, and that background is also present, but this one Ammonite is just kind of standing there and chilling. The giraffe rig is in an oasis city yet, as it tries to eat some grass off the ground from what it seems. Then, the ladybug seems to be in the same area as the previous card, and like how they're just climbing on leaves. The seal card is also really nice teal water, and I like the sleeping one in the back as well as the little waterfall. Their slugma is just adorable. I like how there's just one trying to drink some hot steamy water from the crater. I think that's a really cool idea for a card. Then finally for Baba, the Venomoth, which just flies across a nice canyon that has trees and some deep waters. I also like the deep orange sky in the back. Baba's cards are always interesting, and I quite like all of these cards, especially the Slugma. Umamoto's Pokemon cards are always very striking, but they were granted the wonderful idea to illustrate the full Gengar evolution line for Sky Ridge. But first, I'll talk about Kyoko Umamoto's Flareon, which is really nice. I love how fluffy they made the tail look, and I like the desert hills in the background, as well as the wheat in the foreground. I like how cute and fluffy they made Flareon look in this card. I really like the Zubat that Umamoto did, and I like the little water effects, how they kind of look patterned. Same with the mountains, too. And also, the moon in the background is quite nice, with the Zubat looking pretty dynamic. The Staryu is really nice. I like how it's floating above the water, and I really like the lines that go inwards towards the middle of the little pond. I just like these, like, multiple circles that Umamoto does. The Ghastly looks back and to the right as some awesome broken and busted ruins are in the foreground, with some hills in the background. I like the Haunter quite a lot. I like when they make Haunter look gaseous and flowy, and I also like the Zapdos statue that's visible in the foreground, along with those same hills from the Ghastly card. Overall, a very nice card for a Pokemon like Haunter. Then, we'll talk about the Starmie, which appears to be in a different cave. I like how they use different colors to identify the texture on the rocks as well as, well as on the rocks in the background. The Starmie looks almost kind of long in a way. It's cool though, not the most dynamic looking card for Starmie, but the background makes it awesome. Finally for Umamoto, the Gengar which appears to be in the same ruins as the other two Pokemon of the evolution line. But in this card, you can see Zapdos and the Articuno statue in the ruins, as Gengar evilly smiles off to the right of the card. I like the cool blue color that they use for this Gengar card, and I like how scary he looks, but also kind of curious in a way. For Sky Ridge, Umamoto delivers cards that make you really want them, especially the Gengar and even a simplistic Pokemon like Zubat. Alright, so now we're moving on to the final four artists of Sky Ridge, and to start off, we'll talk about Hajime Kusajima. In the previous video, I praised them for their beautiful renditions of a Pokemon like Magnemite, but this artist has something special about them in this set, as well. First of all, we'll talk about the Articuno, which is a beautiful rendition of the Pokemon, as it flies through some sort of ancient city, as you can see some stairs below it, and the mountains in the back. Then, there's the Mercargo, which just looks forward but I just like the shading of this Pokemon, and the lava in the background is a nice touch. The Amistar looks up in a compacted cave, and the water below it illuminates the Pokemon above it. The Houndour bounces up and has a very nice shading style that's used on it, with a nice orange-white outline around the Pokemon, with the flowing river in the back. Then, the Starmie, and I like the outline on this one as well. The rocks around it seem to be bending around it, and the spikes are a nice touch, with that bright light illuminating the bottom of the card. And then Kusajima's final regular card was just a Magneton, which looks at its own reflection in a metallic ball, with Pokeballs surrounding the Pokemon. It's interesting to see Magneton with such small magnets, it makes it look interesting and strange. But I like the bright orange sky in the background, and the grass in the foreground. And now, we can talk about a more specific rarity, being Crystal Pokemon. Yep, you heard that right, they brought back crystals once again for Sky Ridge. But Kusajima worked on one being the Crystal Ho-Oh, which is really gorgeous. I really love the deep yellow color to the right of it, and the vibrant colors on the actual Pokemon make it seriously stand out. 
You can also see a crop circle below it, or what it looks to be a crop circle, but I think my favorite part of the card is how its neck bends out below its body, giving you a really interesting view of this Pokemon, where its claws are almost at its head, and it only makes sense that someone like Kusajima was able to do such a beautiful card for a beautiful set. Our next artist is Koki Saito, who illustrated a total of 8 cards for Sky Ridge. That's a pretty big increase from the previous set's 3. The first card by them is the Dugong, which looks back towards the camera as steam rises in the background. I like the expression on Dugong's face, as it's pretty expressive. The Kabutops in a similar cave to the ones we saw from the Kabuto, but has its scythes primed as it jumps into battle. The Magneton faces in all different directions, as the camera looks up onto it, with some kind of city in the background, and a nice sky can also be seen in the card. The Moltres looks back and to the left as it glides through the air. It's kind of hard to tell what else is going on in the card, so I'll move on to the Fortress, which travels with a buddy, and they seem to be exploring some caves or a cliffside from the looks of it. The Heracross swipes its claw down. I like seeing the effect of the claw swipe, as well as its very determined face. It's a nice touch. And finally for Saito, they worked on the one and only Crystal Charizard for Sky Ridge. When I look at this card, I think, wow, this is almost certainly a Charizard card. I mean, the illustration is gorgeous, don't get me wrong, and I like the background that it has as well, with those wings that jump upwards and outwards. But I like seeing other Pokemon that Saito illustrated, which is probably a really weird thing to say. I just think I have major Charizard fatigue from all the new Charizards in the world. An artist who... I'm not surprised it's so far in the list is Mitsuhiro Rita, and they worked on a grand total of 8 cards for Sky Ridge. Firstly, we'll talk about the Macargo, which shares off into the distance as it stands on top of a rock. I like the deep sky in the background, and a semi-realistic flame on the Macargo shell. The Nido Queen can be seen snooping around in the alleyway, and I like the camera angle that showcases the Nido Queen's horn. The Raikou may be one of my favorite, if not my very favorite card from the whole set. I mean, the pose, the action, the electricity that crackles in the background, and those glass shards that appear in the foreground. I think this card is really a work of art, and I'll probably go a little bit out of my way to find a nice picture of this card. I mean, hey, I even have this card in my own personal collection. Granted, the card is in Japanese, but it's amazing looking either way. The Rhydon is in a really cool pose. It's like mid-action, with a bunch of different kinds of rocks surrounding it. It just makes the card look nice. Enough said. The Pineco floats along a crack in the ground, most likely the result of some earthquake. The Ursa Ring lays down in hot springs that the Teddy Ursa from the previous card was checking out, which is just a cute connection of the story, which I really enjoy. Finally, for Arita, the two crystal cards, and we'll start off with the Golem. Really cool to see a Pokemon like Golem get a cool chase card, and the colors on this one are absolutely gorgeous. I really adore that extremely deep red-orange color that was used for the light of the sun, as well as the pose that Golem's in, as it just holds onto one of the dunes that the dunes that sit right next to it. The sky is just a marvel, and it really stands out. Then, the Crystal Celebi is just gorgeous. I love how Celebi is looking back at the camera as it shoots out whatever it can conjure up, like the vines and roots. And I also really love the red, blue, green, and yellow that can be seen in the background. It makes the card really pop, and makes it feel really special and distinct. Finally for Sky Ridge, Atsuko Nishida, who worked on the Politoed for Sky Ridge, which looks up and to the right, with some leaves almost covering its head as they droop down, and the Politoed stands in some kinds of stream, which is kind of neat. The Umbreon poses in front of the moon, as it typically does. I like how the ears can be seen covering the moon as it's looking back at the camera, with the grass surrounded obstructing parts of the moon. The Zatu, which simply glides through the air. I like how the different colors reflect off of this Pokemon, specifically, like its big forehead. The Mistrevis flies through the air as well, but its hair flows in different directions behind it, and it looks quite cute as it's surrounded by nice bright red light. The Noctowl looks to the right as it covers its body with its own wing, with a dark night sky in the background, and trees surround it. The Persian Prince is through some brownish yellowish grass as it looks to the left, and the sky behind it almost looks pink. I also like the Jigglypuff that Nishida did, with the bright flash in the sun and the Jigglypuffs just wading through the shallow and bright blue water, with a nice blue sky in the background. It makes them very cute. Nishida worked on two crystal cards for Sky Ridge, being the Crobat, which flies through the air and looks over to the right, and I really love how Crobat looks in this card. I don't know if it's just the pinkish color that Nishida used for this Pokemon, or just the contrast in colors, but I really do like the actual design that Nishida settled on for the Pokemon in particular. 
The other crystal card that Nishida did was the Kabutops, which looks very menacing. With the bright shading that Nishida uses, it almost makes the scythe look like they're shimmering and glistening that metallic hue that they emit. I like the slashes of black in the background, as well as the red, almost evil looking eye of Kabutops. This card is amazing, and I also adore how its arms are crossed over each other. It just makes the Pokemon look straight cool. For an artist who I'm used to seeing cutesy cards of, Nishida proves themselves to be a pretty talented artist just in general. Now, we can quickly talk about all of the holo cards in this set. This set did the same thing that Aquapolis did, but this time, I think I'm just going to name off all the cards and all the hollows, instead of reading off every single individual artist along with it. So, first, we have H1, Alakazam, Arcanine, Articuno, Beedrill, Crobat, Dugong, Flareon, Fortress, Gengar, Gyarados, Houndoom, Jolteon, Kabutops, Ledian, Machamp, Magcargo, and Magcargo again, Magneton, Magneton again, Moltres, Nidoqueen, Pilloswine, Politoed, Polyrath, Raichu, Raikou, Rhydon, Starmie, Steelix, Umbreon, Vaporeon, and Zatu. These hollows that they chose for the set are all really good, and they're releasing really a single one that I actually dislike. Wow, I think that wraps up Sky Ridge. Thankfully for me, I separated this into three parts, because all of this in one video would make it longer than my Neo Destiny video for sure, which is currently the longest video on the channel. And, geez, there are so many cards to love in Sky Ridge. I mean, it is the penultimate WotC set for a reason, as well as their final one, but there are so many desirable cards in this set that any collector would want, even if you're just going to get some of the common or uncommon cards. My personal favorite cards are the Crystal Crobat, Crystal Golem, Crystal Ho-Oh, Crystal Celebi, Steelix, Raikou, Slugma, Staryu, Polyrath, Vaporeon, Jolteon, Haunter, Arcanine, Snubble, and the Umbreon. There are so many cards that you could love from this set, and I just chose some of the ones that stand out to me the most. I encourage you to look in your own time and figure out what your own favorite card from Sky Ridge is. In my next video, I want to cover the Wizards of the Coast promo cards, as well as the Southern Islands, and the Vending Machine series. Those videos will all be slightly shorter compared to the big one like one of these, so I'll cover all of them in their own separate mini-videos. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.